Cinema of Italy. The Cinema of Italy comprises the films made within Italy or by Italian directors. The first Italian director is considered to be Vittorio Calcina, a collaborator of the Lumiere brothers, who filmed Pope Leo XIII in 1896. Since its beginning, Italian cinema has influenced film movements worldwide. As of 2018, Italian films have won 14 Academy Awards for Best Foreign Language Film, the most of any country, as well as 12 Palme d'Or, the second most of any country, one Academy Award for Best Picture, and many Golden Lions and Golden Bears. Italy is the birthplace of art cinema and the stylistic aspect of film has been the most important factor in the history of Italian movies. In the early 1900s, artistic and epic films such as The Last Days of Pompeii, 1908 film, L'Inferno, 1911, Quo Vadis, 1913, Otello, 1906 film, and Cabiria, 1914, were made as adaptations of books or stage plays. Italian filmmakers were utilizing complex set designs, lavish costumes, and record budgets, to produce pioneering films. One of the first cinematic avant-garde movements, Italian Futurism, took place in Italy in the late 1910s. After a period of decline in the 1920s, the Italian film industry was revitalized in the 1930s with the arrival of sound film. A popular Italian genre during this period, the Telefoni Bianchi consisted of comedies with glamorous backgrounds. While Italy's fascist government provided financial support for the nation's film industry, most notably the construction of the Cinecita Studios, the largest film studio in Europe, it also engaged in censorship, and thus many Italian films produced in the late 1930s were propaganda films. Post World War II, Italy saw the rise of the influential Italian neorealist movement, which launched the directorial careers of Lucino Visconti, Roberto Rossellini, and Vittorio De Sica. Neorealism declined in the late 1950s in favor of lighter films, such as those of the Commedia Litaliana genre and important directors like Federico Fellini and Michelangelo Antonioni. Actresses such as Sophie Loren, Giulietta Massina and Gina Lollobrigida achieved international stardom during this period. The Spaghetti Western achieved popularity in the mid-1960s, peaking with Sergio Leone's Dollars Trilogy which featured enigmatic scores by composer Ennio Morricone. Erotic Italian thrillers, or giallos, produced by directors such as Mario Bava and Dario Argento in the 1970s, influenced the horror genre worldwide. During the 1980s and 1990s, directors such as Ermanno Olmi, Bernardo Bertolucci, Giuseppe Tornatore, Gabriele Salvatore's and Roberto Benigna brought critical acclaim back to Italian cinema. The country is also famed for its prestigious Venice Film Festival, the oldest film festival in the world, held annually since 1932 and awarding the Golden Lion. In 2008, the Venice Days, Giornate degli Autori, a section held in parallel to the Venice Film Festival, has produced in collaboration with Cinecita Studios and the Ministry of Cultural Heritage a list of 100 films that have changed the collective memory of the country between 1942 and 1978 the 100 Italian films to be saved. The French Lumiere brothers commenced public screenings in Italy in 1896, in March 1896, in Roma and Milan, in April in Naples, Salerno and Bari, in June in Livorno, in August in Bergamo, Bologna and Ravenna, in October in Ancona, and in December in Turin, Pescara, and Reggio Calabria. Lumiere trainees produced short films documenting everyday life and comic strips in the late 1890s and early 1900s. Pioneering Italian cinematographer Filadio Alberini patented his kinetograph during this period. The Italian film industry took shape between 1903 and 1908, led by three major organizations Cinas, based in Rome, and the Turin based companies Ambrosio Film and Italo Film. Other companies soon followed in Milan and Naples and these early companies quickly attained a respectable production quality and wearable to market their products both within Italy and abroad. Early Italian films typically consisted of adaptations of books or stage plays, such as Mario Casarini's Otello, 1906, and Arturo Ambrosio's 1908 adaptation of the novel, The Last Days of Pompeii. Also popular during this period were films about historical figures, such as Casarini's Beatrice Cenci, 1909, and Dugo Fellini's Lucrezia Borgia, 1910. L'Inferno, produced by Milano Films in 1911, was the first full-length Italian feature film ever made. Popular early Italian actors included Emilio Ghione, Alberto Colò, Bartolomeo Pagano, Amlato Novelli, 
Lida Borelli, Ida Carloni Talley, Lydia Quaranta, and Maria Jacobini. Enrico Gazwan's 1913 film Quo Vadis was one of the earliest blockbusters in cinema history, utilizing thousands of extras and a lavish set design. Giovanni Pastroni's 1914 film Cabiria was an even larger production, requiring two years on a record budget to produce, and it was the first epic film ever made. Nino Martiglio's Lost in Darkness, also produced in 1914, documented life in the slums of Naples, and is considered a precursor to the neo-realist movement of the 1940s and 1950s. Between 1911 and 1919, Italy was home to the first avant-garde movement in cinema, inspired by the country's futurism movement. The 1916 Manifesto of Futuristic Cinematography was signed by Filippo Marinetti, Armando Gina, Bruno Cora, Giacomo Bala and others. To the futurists, cinema was an ideal art form, being a fresh medium and able to be manipulated by speed, special effects and editing. Most of the futuristic themed films of this period have been lost, but critics cite Tice, 1917, by Anton Giulio Bergoglia as one of the most influential, serving as the main inspiration for German expressionist cinema in the following decade. The Italian film industry struggled against rising foreign competition in the years following World War I. Several major studios, among them Cines and Ambrosio, formed the Unione Cinematografica Italiana to coordinate a national strategy for film production. This effort was largely unsuccessful, however, due to a wide disconnect between production and exhibition, some movies weren't released until several years after they were produced. Among the notable Italian films of the late silent era were Mario Camerini's Roteo, 1929, and Alessandro Blasetti's Son, 1929. In 1930, Gennaro Righelli directed the first Italian talking picture, The Song of Love. This was followed by Blasetti's Mother Earth, 1930, and Resurrection, 1931, and Camerini's Figaro in His Great Day, 1931. The advent of talkies led to stricter censorship by the fascist government. During the 1930s, light comedies known as Telefoni Bianchi, White Telephones, were predominant in Italian cinema. These films, which featured lavish set designs, promoted conservative values and respect for authority, and thus typically avoided the scrutiny of government censors. Important examples of Telefoni Bianchi include Guido Brignone's Paradiso, 1932, Carlo Bergoglio's Ola Borsa Ola Vita, 1933, and Righelli's Together in the Dark, 1935. Historical films such as Blasetti's 1860, 1934, and Carmen Galanese, 1937, were also popular during this period. In 1934, the Italian government created the General Directorate for Cinema, Direzione Generale per la Cinematografia, and appointed Luigi Freddi its director. With the approval of Benito Mussolini, this directorate called for the establishment of a town southeast of Rome devoted exclusively to cinema, dubbed the Cinecita, Cinema City. Completed in 1937, the Cinecita provided everything necessary for filmmaking, theaters, technical services, and even a cinematography school, the Centro Sperimentale di Cinematografia, for younger apprentices. The Cinecita studios were Europe's most advanced production facilities, and greatly boosted the technical quality of Italian films. Many films are still shot entirely in Cinecita. During this period, Mussolini's son, Vittorio, created a national production company and organized the work of noted authors, directors and actors, including even some political opponents, thereby creating an interesting communication network among them, which produced several noted friendships and stimulated cultural interaction. By the end of World War II, the Italian neorealist movement had begun to take shape. Neorealist films typically dealt with the working class, in contrast to the Telefoni Bianchi, and were shot on location. Many neorealist films, but not all, utilized non-professional actors. Though the term neorealism was used for the first time to describe Luchino Visconti's 1943 film, Ossessione, there were several important precursors to the movement, most notably Camerini's What Scoundrels Men Are. 1932, which was the first Italian film shot entirely on location, and Blasetti's 1942 film, Four Steps in the Clouds. Ossessione angered fascist officials. Upon viewing the film, Vittorio Mussolini is reported to have shouted, This is not Italy. Before walking out of the theater. The film was subsequently banned in the fascist controlled parts of Italy. While neorealism exploded after the war, 
and was incredibly influential at the international level. Neorealist films made up only a small percentage of Italian films produced during this period, as post war Italian moviegoers preferred escapist comedia starring actors such as Toto and Alberto Sordi. Neorealist works such as Roberto Rossellini's trilogy Rome, Open City, 1945, Pisa, 1946, and Germany, Year Zero, 1948, with professional actor Suez Anna Magnani and a number of non professional actors, attempted to describe the difficult economic and moral conditions of post war Italy and the changes in public mentality in everyday life. Visconti's The Earth Trembles, 1948, was shot on location in a Sicilian fishing village and utilized local non-professional actors. Giuseppe De Santis, on other hand, used actors such as Silvana Mangano and Vittorio Gassman in his 1949 film, Bitter Rice, which is set in the Po Valley during rice harvesting season. Poetry and cruelty of life were harmonically combined in the works that Vittorio De Sica wrote and directed together with screenwriter Cesar Zabatini, among them, Shoeshine, 1946, The Bicycle Thief, 1948 and Miracle in Milan, 1951. The 1952 film Umberto D. showed a poor old man with his little dog, who must beg for alms against his dignity in the loneliness of the new society. This work is perhaps to see Cus masterpiece in one of the most important works in Italian cinema. It was not a commercial success and since then it has been shown on Italian television only a few times. Yet it is perhaps the most violent attack, in the apparent quietness of the action, against the rules of the new economy the new mentality, the new values, and it embodies both a conservative and a progressive view. Although Umberto D. is considered the end of the neorealist period, later films such as Federico Fellini's La Strada, 1954, and De Sica's 1960 film Two Women, for which Sofia Loren won the Oscar for Best Actress, are grouped with the genre. Director Pier Paolo Pasolini's first film, A Catone, 1961, shows a strong neorealist influence. Italian neorealist cinema influenced filmmakers around the world, and helped inspire other film movements, such as the French New Wave and the Polish Film School. The neorealist period is often simply referred to as the golden age of Italian cinema by critics, filmmakers, and scholars. It has been said that after Umberto D. nothing more could be added to neorealism. Possibly because of this, neorealism effectively ended with that film. Subsequent works turn toward lighter atmospheres, perhaps more coherent with the improving conditions of the country, and this genre has been called pink neorealism. This trend allowed better equipped actresses to become real celebrities, such as Sophie Loren, Gina Lalo Brigitta, Silvana Pampanini, Lucia Bosse, Barbara Boucher, Eleonora Rossi Drago, Silvana Mangano, Verna Lisi, Claudia Cardinale, and Stefania Centrale. Soon pink neorealism, such as Pain. Amore e Gelasia, 1954, released in the U.S. as Frisky, with Vittorio De Sica and Jean Lalo Brigida, was replaced by the Commedia Liliana, a unique genre that, born on an ideally humoristic line, talked instead very seriously about important social themes. At this time, on the more commercial side of production, the phenomenon of Toto, a Neapolitan actor who was acclaimed as the major Italian comic, exploded. His films, often with Peppino de Filippo and almost always with Mario Castellani, expressed a sort of neorealistic satire, in the means of a ghetto, a hammy actor, as well as with the art of the great dramatic actor he also was. A film machine who produced dozens of titles per year, his repertoire was frequently repeated. His personal story, a prince born in the poorest Rione, section of the city, of Naples, his unique twisted face, his special mimic expressions and his gestures created an inimitable personage and made him one of the most beloved Italians of the 1960s. Italian comedy is generally considered to have started with Mario Monicelli's I Solidi Ignoti, Big Deal on Madonna Street, 1958, and derives its name from the title of Pietro Germi's Divorzio Italiana, Divorce Italian Style, 1961. For a long time this definition was used with a derogatory intention. Vittorio Gasman Marcello Mastroianni, Ugo Tognazzi, Alberto Sordi, Claudia Cardinale, Monica Vitti and Nino Manfredi were among the stars of these movies, that described the years of the economical reprise and investigated Italian customs, a sort of self-ethnological research. In 1961 Dino Risi directed Una Vita Difficile, A Difficult Life, The Neil Sorpasso, The Easy Life, Now a Cult Movie, followed by, I Mostri, 
The Monsters, also known as 15 from Rome, in nome del popolo italiano, in the name of the Italian people, and profumo di donna, scent of a woman. Monicelli's works include La Grande Guerra, The Great War, I Compagni, Comrades, also known as The Organizer, L'Armada Branca e Leone, Voliamo i Colonelli, We Want the Colonels, Romanzo Popolare, Popular Novel, and the Amici Mie series. A series of black and white films based on Don Camillo character created by the Italian writer and journalist Giovannino Quareschi were made between 1952 and 1965. These were French-Italian co-productions, and starred Fernandel as Don Camillo and Gino Cervi as Paponi. The titles are, The Little World of Don Camillo, The Return of Don Camillo, Don Camillo's Last Round, and Don Camillo in Moscow. Mario Camerini began filming the film Don Camillo e I Giovanni Doggi but had to stop filming due to Fernandel's falling ill, which resulted in his untimely death. The film was then completed in 1972 with Gastone Moscan playing the role of Don Camillo and Lionel Stander as Paponi. A Don Camillo, The World of Don Camillo, film was remade in 1983, an Italian production with Terence Hill directing and also starring as Don Camillo. Colin Blakely performed Paponi in one of his last film roles. In the late 1940s, Hollywood studios began to shift production abroad to Europe. Italy was, along with Britain, one of the major destinations for American film companies. Shooting at Cinecitta, large-budget films such as Quo Vadis, 1951, Roman Holiday, 1953, Ben-Hur, 1959, and Cleopatra, 1963 were made in English with international casts and sometimes, but not always, Italian settings or themes. The heyday of what was dubbed Hollywood on the Tiber was between 1950 and 1970, during which time many of the most famous names in world cinema made films in Italy. With the release of 1958's Hercules, starring American bodybuilder Steve Reeves, the Italian film industry gained entree to the American film market. These films, many with mythological or Bible themes, were low budget costume slash adventure dramas, and had immediate appeal with both European and American audiences. Besides the many films starring a variety of muscle men as Hercules, heroes such as Samson and Italian fictional hero Machiste were common. Sometimes dismissed as low quality escapist fare. The peplums allowed newer directors such as Sergio Leone and Mario Bava a means of breaking into the film industry. Some, such as Mario Bava's Hercules in the Haunted World, Italian, Ercole al Centro della Terra, are considered seminal works in their own right. As the genre matured, budgets sometimes increased, as evidenced in 1962's I Set Gladiatori, The Seven Gladiators in 1964 U.S. release, a widescreen epic with impressive sets and matte painting work. Most peplum films were in color, whereas previous Italian efforts had often been black and white. On the heels of the peplum craze, a related genre, the spaghetti western arose and was popular both in Italy and elsewhere. These films differed from traditional westerns by being filmed in Europe on limited budgets, but featured vivid cinematography. The most popular spaghetti westerns were those of Sergio Leone, whose Dollars Trilogy, A Fistful of Dollars, For a Few Dollars More, and The Good, The Bad and the Ugly, featuring Clint Eastwood and scores by Ennio Morricone, came to define the genre along with Once Upon a Time and Thwest. Also considered spaghetti westerns is a film genre which combined traditional western ambience with a commedia Italiana type comedy, films including They Call Me Trinity and Trinity Is Still My Name, which featured Bud Spencer and Terence Hill, the stage names of Carlo Pettersoli and Mario Girardi. Italy has produced many important cinematography auteurs, including Federico Fellini, Michelangelo Antonioni, Roberto Rossellini, Vittorio De Sica, Licino Visconti, Ettore Scola, Sergio Leone, Luigi Comencini, Pier Paolo Pasolini, Bernardo Bertolucci, Franco Zeffirelli, Valerio Zurlini, Floristano Bencini, Mario Monicelli, Marco Ferreri, Elio Petri, Dino Risi, and Moro Bolognini. These directors' works often span many decades and genres. Present auteurs include Giuseppe Tornatore, Marco Bellocchio, Ermano Olmi, Nani Moretti, Gabriele Salvatores, Gianni Emilio, Dario Argento, and Paolo Sorrentino. In 1961 Sofia Loren won the Academy Award for Best Actress for her role as a woman who is raped in World War II, along with her adolescent daughter, in Vittorio de Sica's Two Women. She was the first actress to win an Academy Award for a performance in any foreign language, and the second Italian leading lady Oscar winner.
after Anna Magnani. During the 1960s and 70s, Italian filmmakers Mario Bava, Riccardo Frida, Antonio Margheriti and Dario Argento developed giallo horror films that become classics and influenced the genre in other countries. Representative films include, Black Sunday, Castle of Blood, Twitch of the Deaf Nerve, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Deep Red and Suspiria. Due to the success of the James Bond film series the Italian film industry made large amounts of imitations and spoofs in the Eurospy genre from 1964 to 1967. Following the 1960s boom of shockumentary Mondo films such as Gualtiero Giacopetti's Mondo Cane, during the late 1970s and early 1980s, Italian cinema became internationally synonymous with violent horror films. These films were primarily produced for the video market and were credited with fueling the video nasty era in the United Kingdom. Directors in this genre included Lucio Fulci, Joe D'Amato, Umberto Lenzi, and Ruggiero Dudatu. Some of their films faced legal challenges in the United Kingdom. After the Video Recordings Act of 1984, it became a legal offense to sell a copy of such films as Cannibal Holocaust and SS Experiment Camp. Italian films of this period are usually grouped together as exploitation films. Several countries charged Italian studios with exceeding the boundaries of acceptability with their late 1970s Nazi exploitation films, inspired by American movies such as Ilsa, She Wolf of the SS. The Italian works included the notorious but comparatively tame SS experiment camp and the far more graphic Last Orgy of the Third Reich, Italian, L'Ultima Orgia del Three Reich. These films showed, in great detail, sexual crimes against prisoners at concentration camps. These films may still be banned in the United Kingdom and other countries. Polizio Tesci, plural of Polizia Tesco, films constitute a subgenre of crime and action film that emerged in Italy in the late 1960s and reached the height of ear popularity in the 1970s. They are also known as Polizieschi, Italo crime. Euro crime or simply Italian crime films. Most notable international actors acted in this genre of films such as Alain Delon, Henry Silva, Fred Williamson, Charles Bronson, Thomas Millian, and others international stars. Between the late 1970s and mid 1980s, Italian cinema was in crisis, art films became increasingly isolated, separating from the mainstream Italian cinema. Among the major artistic films of this era were Lachi Tadel Dunn. E. La Neva, Ginger and Fred by Fellini, La Albero degli Zoccoli by Ermano Olmi winner of the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, La Notte di San Lorenzo by Paolo and Vittorio Taviani, Antonioni's Identificazione di Unidana, and Bianca and La Mesa e Finita by Nani Moretti. Although not entirely Italian, Bertolucci's The Last Emperor, winner of nine Oscars, and Once Upon a Time in America of Sergio Leone came out of this period also. During this time, Commedia Sexy Italiana films, described as trash films, were popular in Italy. These comedy films were of little artistic value and reached their popularity by confronting Italian social taboos, most notably in the sexual sphere. Actors such as Lino Bonfi, Diego Abate and Chuono, Alvaro Vitali, Gloria Guida, Barbara Boucher and Edwige Fenich owe much of their popularity to these films. Also considered part of the trash genre are films which feature Fantozzi, a comic personage invented by Paolo Villaggio. Although Villaggio's movies tend to bridge trash comedy with a more elevated social satire, this character had a great impact on Italian society, to such a degree that the adjective Fantasiano entered the lexicon. Of the many films telling of Fantozzi's misadventures, the most notable were Fantozzi and Il Secondo Tragico Fantozzi. A new generation of directors has helped return Italian cinema to a healthy level since the end of the 1980s. Probably the most noted film of the period is Nuovo Cinema Paradiso, for which Giuseppe Tornatore won a 1989 Oscar, awarded in 1990, for Best Foreign Language Film. This award was followed when Gabriele Salvatore's As Mediterraneo won the same prize for 1991. 1994, directed by and starring Massimo Droisi received five nominations at the Academy Awards, and won for Best Original Score. Another exploit was in 1998 when Roberto Benigni won three Oscars for his movie Life is Beautiful, La Vida e Bella, Best Actor, Best Foreign Film, Best Music. In 2001 Nani Moretti's film The Sun's Room, La Stanza del Filio received the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. Other noteworthy recent Italian films include, 
Jonah J.V. Snella Bolena directed by Roberto Fianza, Il Gran Coco Mero by Francesca Archibuggi, The Profession of Arms, Il Mestiere dell'Army, by Olmi, Laura di Religione by Marco Bellocchio, Il Ladro di Bambini, L'America, The Keys to the House, La Chiave di Casa, by Gianni Emilio, I'm Not Scared, I Anon Hopaura, by Gabriel Salvatore's, La Fate Ignorante, Facing Windows, La Finestra di Fronte, by Ferdson Ozbtek, Good Morning, Night, Buongiorno, Note, by Marco Bellocchio, The Best of Youth, La Melio Gioventù, by Marco Tullio Giordana, The Beast in the Heart, La Bestia nel Cuore, by Cristina Gomenzini. In 2008 Paolo Sorrentino's Il Divo, a biographical film based on the life of Giulio Andreotti, won the jury prize in Gamora, a crime drama film, directed by Matteo Garone won the Grand Prix at the Cannes Film Festival. Paolo Sorrentino's The Great Beauty, La Gran Belleza, won the 2014 Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. The two highest-grossing Italian films have both been directed by Gennaro Nunziante and starred Kekos alone, Sola Catnell. 2013, with 51.8 million euros, and Quovado, 2016, with 65.3 million euros. They Call Me Jeek, a 2016 critically acclaimed superhero film directed by Gabriele Minetti and starring Claudio Santa Maria, won many awards, such as 8 David Di Donatello, 2 Nastro d'Argento, and a Globo d'Oro. Gianfranco Rossi's documentary film Fire at Sea, 2016, won a Golden Bear at the 66th Berlin International Film Festival. They Call Me Jig and Fire at Sea were also selected as the Italian entry for the Best Foreign Language Film at the 89th Academy Awards, but they were not nominated. Other successful 2010s Italian films include, Vincere by Marco Bellocchio, The First Beautiful Thing, La Prima Cosa Bella, Human Capital, Il Capital Mano, and Like Crazy, La Pazza Gioia, by Paolo Verzi, We Have a Pope. Habemus Papam, and Mia Madre by Nani Moretti, Caesar Must Die, Cesar Deve Morire, by Paolo and Vittorio Taviani, Don't Be Bad, Non Essere Cattivo, by Claudio Caligari, Romanzo Criminale by Michel Placido, that spawned a TV series, Romanzo Criminale, La Seri, Youth, La Giovinezza, by Paolo Sorrentino, Sabur by Stefano Solima, Perfect Strangers, Perfetti Sconosciuti, by Paolo Genovese, Italian Race, Veloce Camille Vento, by Matteo Roveri, and Mediterranea and the Chiambro by Jonas Carpignano. Call Me By Your Name, 2017, the final installment in Luca Guadagnino's thematic desire trilogy, following I Am Love, 2009, and A Bigger Splash, 2015, received widespread acclaim and numerous accolades, including the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay in 2018. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.